This year, more than ever, has been about being prepared. Here we go. Good job. Overcoming any adversity that comes our way and getting stronger as a team. All the time in the weight room and in the gym, it's led to this. Let one thing be for certain. When the tip goes up, we're ready. Coming off a loss nearly three weeks ago to a top 10 Stanford team, the 7-3 Sun Devils are looking to rebound against the streaking Colorado Buffaloes, who are coming off their own upset victory in overtime against that same Stanford squad. Hello and welcome into the Pac-12 pregame show. I'm Jordan Spurgeon, joined by Alex Gelman. And Alex, it's apparent the records won't matter in this matchup as both teams have proven they can compete with anyone in the Pac-12. And that's exactly right. Arizona State hasn't played in three weeks, and they're coming off a big loss against Stanford. And on the other hand is Colorado. They haven't won a road game all year, 0-4 on the road. This is a big game. Both teams need a win tonight. And right now we'll toss it to the tail of the tape, and we'll look at the conference records. Colorado 4-5 and five in the Pac-12, and Arizona State 3-3 three and three right now in the Pac-12. Yeah, both teams doing okay in the Pac-12. Uh, the biggest difference here, we saw them both play Stanford in recent weeks. It was three weeks ago for ASU, last week for Colorado. Colorado pulled off the upset victory. ASU got off to a slow start in that one, and Charlie Turner's team was not able to overcome that Stanford team. So we've seen them both compete. Now we get to see them play each other. Yeah, it's going to be a great game tonight, and especially with how Arizona State has been shooting over the last couple games, they want to carry that momentum into Desert Financial Arena tonight. We mentioned ASU hasn't played in a few weeks. Well, for the Sun Devils, they've had a lot of schedule changes, so to keep up, we're going to go ahead and toss it over to Connor McGill for more. After having to sit out 19 days due to COVID-19 team concerns, the ASU women's basketball team is ready to get back to work today versus the Colorado Buffaloes and why not not only look at today's matchup but what's in store for the rest of the month for the Sun Devils so let's go over to our handy nifty schedule right here at the top is the matchup that's happening today versus the Colorado Buffaloes the Buffaloes coming off an impressive overtime victory over the number one team in the nation Stanford not only that they had a player who scored 32 points and a player that usually averages 16.5 points per game, Holling Shag right there, who had a game right there herself. It's going to be a good game. In the last 10 games these two teams have faced, ASU has won every single one of them. But this year, it seems like this one is going to be a lot closer than normal. This one's going to be a game that we're going to be paying close attention to. Now let's go later into the weekend on Sunday when ASU faces the Utah Utes. They faced the Utes in December and came away with the victory there. I see this one being a little bit closer. Some players to look out for on the Sun Devil team, though. Taya Hansen and Jaden Simmons, players that have been key performers for the Sun Devils. Now we go to some more competitive game next week. It's going to be the UCLA Bruins, the number six ranked team in the nation. This one's going to be a tough one. The Sun Devils are going to take to the road. This one is going to be very tough for the Sun Devils to win. If they do, great. If they don't, I think that the Sun Devils could get past it. Now we go to this last game, which is going to end out January. And this one is against USC. The last time these two teams faced earlier in the year, it was a close one. And I still think this is going to be a close one right here. I think if the Sun Devils can at least win three of the four games, they could be in good shape to be in good position to possibly make a run for it. We will see what happens there. But 
Big matchup is happening today, so I will send it back to the studio. Welcome back to the Pac-12 pregame show. Joining me today for our social media zone from around ASU Athletics is Olivia Eisenhower. So Olivia, take us through some of the best tweets and Instagram posts from the week. Thank you, Jordan. Well, first to start it off, Coach Charlie of the women's team had a specific quote she wanted to share for MLK Day this year, saying, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And Riley Richardson, that graduated in 2020, is currently playing professionally overseas in Luxembourg, replied this was also her favorite MLK quote. Powerful message from two of ASU women's greatest members. Yes, and now same court, different sport, redshirt Emily Holbrook, Throwing what she knows for media day this year for the Sun Devil volleyball team, you are seeing the new jerseys from Adidas' this season, and their season starts today. Good luck, you guys. The one color Adidas always gets right is black. You can never go wrong with Adidas' black jerseys. Totally it's really in sport. Right. <laughs> now passing it back to basketball. Sun Devils men's hoops also paid respect on the anniversary of the passing of 2014 graduate Jermaine Marshall. Number 34 played professionally, including in France, where he was found dead January 18th due to natural causes. He was a big contributor in the 2014 NCAA tournament, and of course we wish the team and his family well. Well, that wraps up our social media zone here. Thank you for joining me today, Olivia. Now we're going to toss it over to Zach Larson, who's got more on ASU's defense. The Arizona State women's basketball team currently sits fifth in a highly competitive Pac-12 conference with a 7-3 overall record. Although its offense hasn't quite come together yet, its defense has, and that's what's kept them competitive in the first part of the season. I feel we've really, this team has really bought in you know, while they grow offensively, right, and get more efficient and get more comfortable with each other, and, and we can actually have the same people out there from game to game because that makes a difference too, you know, especially with an all new team. Um, you know, we're, I think we're going to just get better and better. And Angie Nelp, our associate coach, does an you know, amazing job. I and mean, we're kids get in, they shoot extra. I think all that's going to come in the meantime. I feel like our defense is really held down the court. I mean, people adjust to it second round, but you know, we're going to keep evolving as well. In the 10 games played this season, head coach Charlie Turner Thorne's team has allowed 55 points per game, which is the second best in the conference, only behind fifth ranked Stanford. The team has also held the opposition to just 28.6% shooting from the three point line, the third lowest percentage in the Pac 12. But there is still room for improvement as ASU continues to face their conference rivals. We just have to rebound better. You know, we have to eliminate the let ups on defense, and we have to eliminate the kind of slop, you know, those kind of forced possessions on offense. And I think, you know, this team now knows they can play with anybody in the country. After two weeks of not playing due to coronavirus concerns, playing the Buffaloes could present a challenge, both offensively and defensively. They're a very good defensive team. They mix up their defenses. Um, they know who they are. Um, lots of weapons, um, lots of depth. So, it's gonna, I'm, I mean, it's just exciting to get to play, but it'd be a tough first game back. Now the Sun Devils will look to stop a Colorado team that has racked up the fourth most points in the conference and has scored 75 or more points in three of their last four games, including a win over previously number one ranked Stanford on Sunday. For Pac-12 Plus, I'm Zachary Larson. Thanks, Zach. Well, tip-off is right around the corner, so Alex, we've got some keys to the game. What's one key for ASU tonight? Well, for Arizona State, they got to get off to a quick start. They were they were outscored 19 to four in the first quarter against Stanford back on January 3rd. They need to get off to a better start tonight. Absolutely. For them on offense, I think they need to shoot better from beyond the arc. The last few games, they have really have not shot well under 30 percent from beyond the arc. So if they can get some better shots from beyond the arc early on, I think they'll be fine uh, tonight against Colorado. But now, what, what do you think Colorado needs to do in order to win this game? Well, for Colorado, they're coming off their biggest game, biggest win in program history, and they need to carry that momentum into Tempe tonight and get their first road win of the season. Same thing. For Colorado, they really need to focus on defense in the paint. A lot of times, they've really struggled inside the paint. ASU does a good job getting into the lane, so if they can slow down some of the guards for ASU when they drive into the lane, then Colorado will be doing just fine. And that'll do it here for us on Pac-12 Pregame Show. For our director, Ike Everod, producer, Caleb Bushi, Jordan Spurgeon, alongside me at the desk, I'm Alex Gelman. Let's send it out to Desert Financial Arena for tip-off between Colorado and Arizona State.